Coming up on today's show, Tesla unveils its solar roof and power pack 2.0. There are now 100,000 Nissan Leafs in the US and the bizarre ongoing case of the oil industry executive who pretended to be Elon Musk and now wants his court case dropped because the imitation sucked. These stories and more next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is only possible thanks to the kind donations of viewers like you. Head to www.patreon.com forward slash transport evolved to find out how you can make your own donation today to keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, November 4th, 2016. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and we're starting today's show with Tesla's big news from late last Friday, the unveiling of its new solar roof photovoltaic roof tiling system and updates to its Powerwall 2.0 and Powerpack 2.0 products. Developed in collaboration with SolarCity, the solar roof tiles come in a variety of different styles and have been engineered to be as unobtrusive and as camouflaged as possible when viewed from street level. While Tesla has yet to release pricing information, the tiles will be produced in Buffalo, New York and should go on sale shortly. Meanwhile, Tesla's updated Powerwall and Powerpack products pack far more energy storage than their predecessors. The Powerwall 2.0, which can store twice the energy of its predecessor, also has a higher continuous power raking, making it ideal for backup power applications. Priced from $5,500, it's also very cost-effective and it will go on sale later this year. All those new products from Tesla means that it's going to be hiring lots of new staff. But over in Germany, Volkswagen's head of human resources, Karl-Heinz Blessing, warned that Volkswagen's new focus on producing electric rather than internal combustion engine cars would result in the loss of more than 25,000 jobs in the next decade. The reason? Well, electric cars are less complex to build than internal combustion engine vehicles, requiring less mechanical construction and thus less workers to build them. But unlike Mercedes-Benz, which recently said that it would retrain workers displaced from engine plants onto battery manufacturing plants to ensure no jobs were lost when it shifts its attention to electric cars, Volkswagen has said it remains unconvinced that building batteries in-house makes sense. If I'm honest, it's a bit of a cop-out from Volkswagen and frankly doesn't inspire any confidence in its future, especially after Dieselgate. Don't you agree? Following its usual pattern of making continual updates to its electric vehicle lineup, Tesla Motors has quietly added some important new options to the Model S and Model X electric cars in the form of a brand new all-glass roof for Model S and fold-flat second-row seats for Model X. The Model S roof first. Costing $1,500, the roof option sits between the standard metal roof and the panoramic sunroof option, which now costs $2,000 rather than the $1,500 it did previously. As part of the new roof, made by Tesla's recently announced Tesla Glass division, the B-pillar roof support has been deleted, giving the Model S the same see-through roof options as the Model 3. Now onto Model X and those all-important second-row seats. To date, the lack of folding second row seats had been one of the biggest criticisms angled at Tesla Model X, and now Tesla says that the new second row option makes it the biggest cargo carrier of its class. But there's a caveat. If you want those manually folding second row seats, you'll have to give up the third row seats altogether, as both the six and seven seat Model X come with a non-folding second row. Sorry. Alongside promoting its Nissan LEAF and Nissan EMV200 electric vehicles, Nissan is one of the handful of automakers pushing hard to promote and research the benefits of electric vehicles that they can have on the community when they're not being driven, such as vehicle-to-grid technology, for example. And this week, Nissan's European Technical Centre in Cranfield, UK, unveiled eight new vehicle-to-grid chargers that will not only allow it to rapid charge vehicles on site, but also feed power back to the grid during peak demand periods. It mirrors a similar installation already in use at one of Nissan Japan's technical centers and shows the potential for not only smoothing out the peaks and troughs of the electrical grid, thus saving emissions, but also a future where electric cars can provide backup power in the case of a natural disaster. Neat! Staying with Nissan for a while longer and adding in BMW, both automakers passed different 100,000 electric vehicle milestones this week. 
Just ahead of the sixth anniversary of its going on sale in the US, Nissan confirmed that it sold its 100,000th US Nissan Leaf. It's sold far more than that globally, of course. While BMW confirmed that three years after it launched its i3 and i8 plug-in cars, it's now sold 100,000 plug-in vehicles. Looking forward, Nissan is of course readying its next generation LEAF for market, but unveiled a non-plug-in Nissan Note e-Power serial hybrid this week, getting itself into a little hot water in the process from plug-in fans due to the language used in its presentation. BMW, meanwhile, well, it's stated that now it's sold 100,000 plug-in cars, it's going to push ahead with plans to bring its first autonomous car to market. And of course, when we know more about either, we'll be letting you know here. With a 238-mile EPA-approved range, the all-new 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV is the first non-Tesla electric car to offer customers more than 130 miles range per charge. But that isn't stopping folks, me included, from comparing it to the upcoming Tesla Model 3, as both cars will hit the market with a similar price and range per charge. Well, this week, the folks at Motor Trend decided to compare the Bolt EV to another Tesla car, the Tesla Model S 60, with interesting results. Rather than do a head-to-head -head on a closed track, which they also did actually, the folks at Motor Trend took a Bolt EV on a road trip to the Tesla Design Studios in Hawthorne, California, to compare the two cars head-to-head -head in the real world, getting the impression of both Tesla owners and Tesla staff in the process. The verdict? All seemed to enjoy the chance to test out the competition, but when it came down to the line, everyone there who said they had a Model 3 reservation, or a Model S, said that they're sticking with Tesla. At least, for now. For the past six years or more, we've heard stories bemoaning the slow rollout of electric cars around the world, with naysayers claiming that slow uptake figures mean that electric cars just aren't popular. Well, this week we got some new news, as the second annual survey on electric cars from the Consumer Federation of America detailed recently, the sales of electric cars per year for the first five years of them being on sale far outpaced those of hybrid cars over their first five years of sales. Last year, the number of electric cars sold did drop overall compared to the previous year, closing the gap between fifth-year EV sales and fifth-year hybrid sales. But as our friends at Green Car Reports note, that's likely due to the Osborne effect, the promise of longer-range batteries just around the corner that are temporarily discouraging people from buying a new electric car today. Still, the overall trend is good, and the next time someone tells you EVs will never take off, you've got a new study to point them towards. Fifteen years ago, Japanese automaker Toyota was among one of a handful of automakers reluctantly building electric cars that were rather fine indeed. In Toyota's case, I happen to own a 2002 Toyota RAV4 EV that translated to 100 plus miles of range, seating for five, and decent luggage space. But as those who have watched Who Killed the Electric Car will know, Toyota did everything it could to kill the progress of the EV, choosing instead to focus on hybrid and hydrogen fuel cell technology instead. And in the interim, Toyota's prime excuse for not focusing on electric vehicles despite building limited numbers of electric Toyota IQs and paying Tesla to build the second generation RAV4 EV, was that battery technology just wasn't ready for prime time in electric cars. Well, this week Toyota has quietly admitted that it now believes lithium-ion technology is ready for use in plug-in cars and, as such, will finally start developing them for mass production. I'm not sure if it's just the truth hitting home that hydrogen was harder to deploy than it had hoped, if it really has changed its mind on plug-in cars, but expect some new electric Toyotas in the future. Let's hope they're able to live up to the reputation of that RAV4 EV sitting in my garage, eh? It's no secret that Tesla CEO Elon Musk doesn't like the oil industry and the massive amounts of greenhouse gas emissions that it's responsible for. After all, the paraphrased mission statement of Tesla as a company is to get people off dirty fossil fuels and onto clean, green, renewable energy. And that, of course, makes him and Tesla something of a target for big oil. And this week, we're reminded how much of a target it is, thanks to the ongoing court case in which an oil service company CFO, Todd Katz, allegedly sent an email to Tesla CFO Jason Wheeler posing as Elon Musk in an attempt to obtain secret company information. The court case, which has been running on since September, has drawn ties between Katz and some of the biggest names in the oil industry 
including Chevron, BP, and ExxonMobil. But right now, the case does not involve any of these companies directly. This week, however, the case took a weird turn when tax countersued against Tesla, questioning how it's uncovered the fake Elon Tesla at yahoo.com email, stating that his hoax was so bad that nobody would have really believed that it was from Mr. Musk. The case, of course, will rumble on, but there's one thing I can say for sure. Big oil really is spooked by the tiny car company from California, isn't it? And finally, over the past few years, we've seen electric vehicles grow in the motorsport world from being niche market curiosities to having their own legitimate race series in the form of the FIA-approved Formula E, the world-famous TT0 motorcycle race, the ever-increasingly popular electric vehicle class at Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, and of course, the recently launched electric GT series. Well, now there's a new one in the form of the Red Bull Rallycross series, which announced this week that it will start a brand new electric only series for 2018. Details are sparse right now, but from what I can tell, teams will be racing on the same kind of rallycross tracks as their internal combustion engine counterparts, which means lots of fun, lots of sliding and high voltage action. Given that rallycross is one of my favorite motorsports, I can't wait to see this new series launch. But I'm going to have to, and so too are you, because that's your lot for today. As always, thanks for joining me and please don't forget to leave your reactions and thoughts to the stories we covered in the comments below, as well as giving us a thumbs up and a share if you liked it. And if you didn't, give us a thumbs down and tell us why, because otherwise we can't improve. Don't forget that you can follow us on Twitter at Transport Evolve, read our past and current articles at transportevolve.com, or check out our YouTube channel for our latest video updates including our recently reintroduced Thought of the Day shows and the ongoing saga of the RAV4 EV staff car. And if you liked what you saw today, please consider keeping us independent and impartial by supporting our Patreon crowdfunding campaign from as little as $1 per month over at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. We're just tipping the scales at $1,100 per month, which after expenses and taxes becomes my sole salary. So I'm very appreciative of your help. Can't donate? Don't worry. Just spread the word, retweet our posts on Twitter, and make sure you tell our friends about the YouTube channel that we have. As always, I'll try to be back next week with another roundup of the week's news. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a great weekend, and until next time, keep evolving.